that this is the toughest off-road race in the world. And there's been many riders that have died on this race over the years. It's a real life wake up call of like, man, what have I got myself in for? Kirsten's story of competing in the Dakar Rally is really gaining momentum as her preparations intensify. With each new week, the prospect of heading to Saudi Arabia grows ever larger. So here we are, five and a half months away from the Dakar, and it's really starting to hit home. It's a reality now that I'm about to take on the biggest, the biggest, the biggest race, the biggest thing in my life, and um, my life is just Dakar now, and with that comes all the excitement. Though the emotions are now that of excitement, Dakar Rally finisher Joey Evans shares his first-hand experiences from the race. You know, the race, the race, the Dakar Rally for me was a dream from when I was in my 20s. It was just one of those things, man, this toughest off-road race in the world. And I heard about it and I was like, yes, I want to, I want to do that race. And then my life took some crazy turns and I, and I broke my back and was paralyzed um, with a spinal cord injury. I was fortunate enough that with time I did learn to walk again and you know, a whole bunch of stories in that on its own. But it took me from that day 10 years to eventually be physically fit enough and to do the racing I needed to qualify to be on that start line. And so 10 years after the 2007 crash in 2017, I stood on the start line of the Dakar Rally and people come up to you and they want autographs and they crowd around you in the bivouac and in the pits and stuff and you're signing t-shirts and you're signing caps and it's just, it's like an alternate universe. It's just crazy. And then you start racing and then the reality sets in that this is the toughest off-road race in the world. And there's been many riders that have died on this race over the years. My race played out just in incredible. You know, there was three of us South Africans that started the race on motorcycles that year in 2017. And by the end of day five, I was the, I was the only South African left in the race. My two teammates, both incredible riders, Walter Tablanche and David Thomas, were both out. David Thomas broke his leg in several places and Walter had uh, his engine burnt out on day four and so I just kept ticking away and I kept ticking away and the race was 13 days and there's so much I could tell you about the race you know the dangers the places the dune fields the mountains the the, sh the rivers you got to cross it was just just a crazy race but on the second last day was where my luck really ran out and that was I was hit by a car you know the car came up behind me and they beat me, but they normally beep you about 200 meters back. And this guy beat me about 30 meters back. And I'm sure he expected me just to swerve out the way quickly. But if I was in a rut at the time, I couldn't get out of the way. And as I try to swerve this bike, the front wheel just dragged up against the side of the rut. And I'd already committed my weight. And this guy was right on me and I just dived off this bike. And he just completely rode right over my bike. And, and there I was on day 12 or 13 after 10 years of trying to get to this race and I was out of the race. And I can't even tell you what that felt like. It was just seemed like all the dreams, all the planning, all the money was just wasted. Um, and it was a real low point for me. And then I decided I gotta just try, you know? And so I tried to fix that bike and, and it took me a, the best part of an hour, but I got that bike working without an exhaust with smashed petrol tanks, the whole frame was bent, the bars were bent. Um, you know, all the lights and the wiring had all been broken up at the back, the whole navigation tower broken and bent into the bars, but I got it working and I, and I started riding. I couldn't ride in the main track anymore, so I kind of zigzagged through the bush, just ticking away, but I was wasting my time. I was out of the race. There was no way at that speed that I could finish that race. That day I had 660 kilometers to still ride. It was just a waste of time. And then the most amazing thing happened and I found a bike in the middle of this desert. Okay, I've just ridden a few kilometers without an exhaust through the bush, trying to stay out of the way. And I've just come across a bike right here where the rider's being evacuated. He's obviously injured. So I'm just gonna take everything off his bike that I need, put it onto mine and just continue. There's nothing else I can do. And then obviously tonight I'm gonna explain to the guy and stuff, but he's been evacuated so he's out the race. But uh, we're just going to quickly cannibalize what we can. It's freaking insane. But it shows you you don't quit. Ever. And I got my bike in pretty decent nick after that, but without navigation. But I'd lost so much time by then. I was four hours behind the guy. I was second last. 
and I decided I've just got to just got to keep going and I had to be in by four o'clock the next morning and I thought well I'm just gonna ride through the night and I rode on and I eventually got to the next that second last bivouac of the Dakar rally at 11 minutes past two in the morning I had one hour of sleep and I rode the last day another 750 odd kilometers and I, and I finished the race and to finish the Dakar rally and to get that medal was just for me was just incredible it had been a dream for so many years it had been this thing i'd like strive for and and paid such a heavy price to to be on that start line it was just incredible was it enjoyable no it was hell you know we just sucked up pain for two weeks is it great to have finished it it's the best feeling in the world i wouldn't trade it for anything to be able to say that you finish that race for me is just incredible and i know that for kirsty she feels this. She feels the same way about this race. This is a this is a dream of hers for many years. It's really she has achieved so much. You know, not even as 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 a woman racing, any guy that would have achieved what she's achieved would be just incredible. And so for her to achieve it is just massive. And this is really the last big thing for her. And she's going to go and race this thing, and she is going to suffer, and she's going to hate it, and she's going to come home with that medal and it's gonna be incredible. To keep up with Kirsten and more on the power tools that won't quit, follow Ryobi Africa on social media.